AP air guns have really changed the air gun genre. But along with that, there's an increased demand of how do I power these air guns? Back in the day, we used to have to go to dive shops, fire departments, and also paintball shops to get our tanks filled. Well, with the advent of these portable compressors, that really changed the game. So today we're gonna to do a deep dive. We're gonna talk about the Vivor 4500 PSI compressor. So stick around. So when I first started delving into the small home compressors, a lot of them were water-cooled. You needed a bucket of water. Sometimes you needed to put ice in it. And it was just a hot mess, a lot of cleanup, and it just took too much time to do. Now we have these small self-contained units that are fan-cooled. They run on 110 or 220, and they're portable. So what I'm gonna do real quick is do a quick specs rundown for you guys. Then I'm gonna show you guys filling up a bottle and then we'll bring it back and then we'll talk about it. I have the uh, fill probe plug in the uh, phosphor fitting. I have everything ready to go. I have it set on 3000 PSI. I'm gonna test it out to see if it'll hit pressure and if we'll do the auto shut off. We're at 1500 right now. We're at 2000. 2500. There you go. And the E4 came out. So we know that everything's working right. I bleed it off. And now I'm ready to fill. I don't normally talk about this is the instruction manual. A lot of them are just plain garbage. Viver did a great job with this. And what I really like about it is that a lot of this is self-contained. It shows you exactly how to use it, but most importantly, how to repair this compressor. Comes with a pretty detailed parts repair kit. You have O-rings, you have some springs, you have some burst discs in there. You have some uh, air replacement air filters. So you can keep this going for a very long, long time. And I like that. I like working on my own gear. I like knowing how it works and they break it down in full detail, color pictures, step-by-step. -step. They do just a great job. Along with that, we have the 12 volt adapter. So if I want to use this out in the field and I don't have a 110 receptacle to plug into, I can hook this up to my vehicle's battery and I can run that off of it. Now, I wouldn't be out in the field, say filling up tanks with that. I would be topping off my air guns with it. That way I don't run down my car battery, but it's a nice option that you have that. And it just gives you a little bit of versatility to be able to keep doing the fun stuff out in the field. 
Also comes with your standard fill whip and it has the uh, air filter on here. And it also has a plug. So you're able to test the unit to see if one, the shut off's gonna work, which that was the first thing I did with this. I tested it out, made sure it went up to uh, the required PSI that I wanted to use it for. And then um, I was able to fill up my uh, pony bottle with it. But for long-term use, I would probably also put another filter on here that takes out all moisture, all particulate, just to make sure if you're in a very humid environment, you may get a little condensation uh, in your line and you wanna keep that out of your air guns. I don't normally talk about this during reviews, but how it was shipped and packaged. Uh, the shipping package was very secure. It had this really nice styrofoam core that went around it and it really uh, protected the unit in travel. Now, if you're like me, don't tell my wife, but I, sometimes I get a lot of packages and those packages sometimes come pretty messed up. It's almost like they've been in a car wreck. This arrived very well and the unit was just in pristine condition. And I owe that to the very good packaging that they did. Folks are gonna ask me, John, how long did it take you to fill your bottle and how hot did the air compressor get before it maxed out at 4,500 PSI. Well, let's talk about the bottle first. Bottle, it took about 20-ish minutes. That wasn't too bad. I was down around 2,000 PSI. I don't like going, dipping too much lower than that just for time constraints. And uh, I don't wanna just cycle the compressor for too long like that. So it took about 20 minutes to hit 4,500 PSI. And then um, usually what happens is I let the bottle cool down a little bit because sometimes the air in here, it gets compressed, gets a little hot. I usually wait an hour or two, let the bottle cool down. Sometimes it drops a little bit of pressure and then I top it off so I get a true 4,500 PSI fill. What really impressed me was the unit maintained temperature pretty consistent throughout the fill. It didn't get that hot as like so, some of the video that I'm gonna show, it stayed right at about the same temp the whole time. So I attribute that to a really good cooling system. The fans that were in here, the intake fan pulled nice cool air in and then it was able to exhaust out the ports really nice. I took temperature readings it never got above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Folks, that's a quick look at the Viver 4500 PSI air compressor. I think they've come a long way. One, we can use it AC or DC power. It's portable. You can take it out in the field and it's affordable. It's under $250. Hey, you're in the game. You have an affordable PCP air gun. You have an affordable compressor. You're in the game, you're out there having fun with family and friends. I'll leave links in the video description below. If you wanna learn more about this compressor, folks, as always, I thank you for watching. Get out and use your gear, and I'll see you on the next video, folks. Take care.